thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one thing Jesus wants to give you is victory in every area of your life. Something good, something good. Welcome to World Harvest Church. Welcome to World Harvest Church. Bienvenidos a la iglesia World Harvest.
saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Yes, I do. Still the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven.
sing his praise aloud. Oh, let's sing his praises aloud. Come on, lift up your voice. Tell how much you love him. Oh, Lord, you are worthy. Oh, Lord, you're worthy.
magnify your name. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Jesus, we glorify your name, the name above every name. That name that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And Lord, we bow our hearts to you today in surrender and adoration of the one who redeemed us from the curse of hell and brought new life through the blood of the cross. And we glorify you. All the glory to you, Jesus. All the glory to you, Jesus. We give you praise. Someone shout, Jesus. Shout, glory. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we got to recognize that everything Jesus did was to break us free into victory. I love what Brother Norval said. The one thing, if you put in one word, what did Jesus bring the, the human race through his sacrifice? That's victory. We have victory over, over sin, death, hell, the grave, sickness poverty, lack, oppression, depression. Jesus came to set us free. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. So we just come to give Him the glory and to magnify Him today. If you'll just stay right where you are, we're going to receive Holy Communion. And I'd like to ask anyone who doesn't have a... If you don't have a communion cup, raise your hand. They'll give you one. They'll give you a communion cup wherever you are. There's some hands right over here, right over there. We'll throw them to if you catch well. I'm just kidding. Run, oh, right over there, gentlemen. Right over there. There's some over here still. Some over here. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. As we wait for everyone to receive, we're going to receive... The broken body of the Lord, and we're going to receive His blood. I told our, we have our dear guest, Dr. John Avanzini, with us this morning. We give a praise for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, I don't know of a better vaccination than receiving Holy Communion once a week. And I'll tell you what, this church has been open since May 1st, wide open. And I promise you, God has protected us, and He's blessed us. There's still churches closed to this day. But I believe that this is the greatest inoculation because sickness ultimately is spiritual. Healing is spiritual. And this can seal your spirit off from open portals that the devil can get through. Through fear, through unforgiveness and doubt. I promise you, this is an, an, a tremendous inoculation. Well, let's take the bread, the wafer out. And Lord, we thank you for this, your body. I want you to say this. Hold your wafer in your hand and say, This is the body of Jesus Christ. It was broken for me that I can receive wholeness and healing to my life and physical body. And today, I release my faith as I partake. Let's partake right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for the healing flow, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The next we take, we peel the foil back, but this represents the blood of Christ. And the blood of Jesus was shed that you and I could be set free from everything that sin brings. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one here can say they're sinless. But the blood of Christ will make you sinless in the eyes of God. It has the power to wash away sin in the sight of God and give us rightful access to heaven's throne, to his love, to his power, to his grace. And so just say this. Say, this blood is the blood of Jesus. It was shed for me. And through the power of this blood, all of my sins are forgiven. And my spirit is washed clean. And I have a right to stand before Almighty God without any consciousness of sin, guilt, and condemnation. 
Now just take a minute, but get your heart right before God. And go to Him regarding anyone that you may be struggling with in your relationship. And just forgive them. Release them. They may deserve this or that, but today you're going to forgive them. Let's just take a moment in the quietness of your space before you and God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. So, Lord, today we forgive as you've forgiven us. We release. We let it all go. We put the blood of Christ upon our hearts and life, and, Lord, we receive your forgiveness, and we receive your love. We're cleansed now by this, your blood. Let's receive the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you praise and I love the honor. You are a God. The one we live for. We give you praise. We give you praise. All of the glory, God. Lord, we give you the glory for this, your sacrifice. We give you praise and all of the honor. You are a God, the one we live for. We give you praise, all of the glory, God. All of the glory. Sing it out now, everybody. All of the glory. We give you the glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. All of the glory, all of the glory. As we're just singing, I just sense, listen, some of you have come here today with some loads on your heart and mind, some things you're having to push off you right now at this moment, but Jesus is here by the power of His Holy Spirit. I tell you, when we come to the body of Christ, we've coming together. There's a corporate anointing that's stronger than an, in, an individual anointing. And you'll cross over in the Spirit as we just sing it one more time. I want you to just give everything to God right now. Just give all the issues, all the struggle, all the questions. Just, just give it to Him. Let Him minister to you His strength, His peace, His grace to you. Amen. We give you praise. We give you praise. Turn it over to Him. In Jesus' name, every weight, every concern, all your anxious thoughts, give it to God. In Jesus' mighty name, I speak a release. I speak a release to your issues right now. In the name of Jesus, we break every work of hell arrayed against your life. We command sickness to go from you. We command oppression to go from you. Every dark cloud the devil sends your way, we break it. In Jesus' name. wonderful presence of the Holy Ghost here. Holy Ghost, thank you for this, this time we pull aside to be with you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for touching every heart and life. Let no one leave unchanged, untouched with your, by your power. We pray in Jesus' name. 
You know, the Bible says this, that we're changed from glory to glory as we come before Him with unveiled face, and as that we see it as in a mirror. And the, and the mirror is the Word of God that reflects like who we really are in Him, and that we're children of the Most High God. Regardless of where you've been born, what nation you're born in, when you're born into the kingdom, you're not part of the family of God. And we have one Father. We're united. One blood. It's the blood of Jesus. I'll tell you what. He is the wonderful. i tell you, everything that divides mankind is really sin. And what eradicates sin is the blood of Jesus. And there's no greater unifying force than the blood of Christ. It says in Scripture that through the blood we made one. And I tell you, we can be made one in Him as well. Jesus wants you to know that He is for you. He's with you. He's going to help you today. Supernatural strength from heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, before you see it, turn to your neighbor. Now you have their name tag. Mention their name. Tell them you love them. In Jesus' name. joining with us online. We greet you. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, we would really love to know about that. And in the seat pocket in front of you, there's a card that says I'm new here on it. If you want to, you can take that out and put your information on it. That way we'll have a record of your visit. We'll know that you were here. And then after service, you can take it right out to the Welcome Center tent. Right out here, we've got coffee and donuts out there and a free gift bag to give you just for being our guest today. So welcome. And also, we're excited. It's food truck day. Yay! It's food truck day, and um, we have we're we're putting the food trucks and the name tags on the same day, the last Sunday of the month. That way, you can hang around after service, have something to eat. Don't you want them to have something to eat? It's on. It's on. You are Pastor Linda. I am. Pastor Merrick, and you know, his name is spelled M-I-R-E-K. A lot of people don't, don't know but that. But it's not Myrick, please. Yes, it's not Myrick, it's Merrick. Uh, but let me tell it's so great to see everyone's names out there, have a food truck, and I want to just say, uh, don't rush out of here. I know as soon as we get done, amen, people make a beeline for the door, almost knocking people over to get out there, get in their car, and get away from church as fast as they can. <laughs> Like you're catching a plane. And actually, you need to learn to linger. Learn, say that, learn to linger. Learn, learn to, to linger. linger. What's your rush? We need to learn how to meet people and find new people. You know, stretch your influence a little bit. Meet someone you haven't met before. Does it sound like a good idea? Yes. Now listen, I've got a stack load of tickets that are free. You can get a free meal from me, especially if you're going to go out with another friend. You say, listen, I've got two people that I'm going to go out with. They're new to the church or I don't know them. I will give you tickets. I will buy their lunches because you want to be their host. Amen? So be. Wow. Amen. It's a deal. There's ice cream out there. And what else? I'm not sure. There's tacos and Philly steaks and all kinds of great stuff out there. It's good carb stuff. Yeah. Um. I've got to release the high school students. High school students, bye. bye you get high to go. Students. Don't stop off at the food truck on the way to Some class. Some people are leaving here. They're, 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 you're not high school. Oh. Hey, we had a great event here yesterday. We had conversations at the She Shed. I just want to thank all the ladies who worked so hard to pull that together. Uh, we've got a, some pictures just to show you how wonderful it was in here. We had the men helping. The men served the women here yesterday. The men's ministry came. And this place was, was packed out. 
Um, we had a wonderful panel where some of us got to answer questions from the group. And we had Carolyn Shuttlesworth who came and just brought an amazing word. She did an awesome, powerful world and then ministered to everyone afterwards. It was a great time. Thank you, women, for those who put it together, especially Dr. Victoria who put all of the decorations together. It was a lot of fun. It was a great time. Uh, could we have a, a clap for the men that served? I know, but you just, you just went over it like it was nothing. Okay. Hey, if you noticed, and it's a comeback. And how come the women's we brought... was so much better than the men's? We looked in here, and this thing was all poofed out, everything going on. And the men, I really, us men talked. We said, what we get is white tables and some, like, pizza. We said we'll help. We'll help the next time. Okay. Well, you're not going to want the frou-frou decorations. I know that much. Anyway, it'll be manly. Whatever we do, we'll help you. We, we brought back the paper bulletin, y'all. It's back. It's back from COVID. We're resurrecting it. It's a bit of a prototype today, but um, we're but trying to help. But each sheet has been sanitized. The <laughs> Sorry. Really, it's going to be simple, like the four, four upcoming events, the mark your calendar type things that you need to mark your calendar for. Then we've got three months of upcoming events on the back. We do send out a weekly update every week. If you are not getting the weekly update from us, check your spam. It might be in your spam. If it's still not there, then call the church to make sure we have your correct email address, and we will get the weekly update to you. So you know what's going on around here. Amen. Listen, I've got some special guests, and I want to honor them today, all the way from Safe House. Would you stand up? We just want to honor you. Yay! Woo God bless all of you. We We're love you. We're glad you're here. And um, come see me afterwards. Everyone gets a free meal at the food truck. Yay. Amen? Does that sound good? We're so glad to have you. God bless you. And thank you for Carl Becker and whoever else Drove there, picked him up, and has to drive back. Carl Becker, stand up. God bless you, brother Carl. He's the man. Bye. Are you leaving me? <laughs> we have a very special, uh, I've got two things. One is the, if you can show that up here, we have the mid-May crusade with Ted Shuttlesworth. And is it called Elizabethtown? What's it? Elizabeth City? Elizabeth City, North Carolina. It's about 20 minutes from the ocean. Uh, so we have the women going, but I'm needing men. And uh, you can look at the dates. You can either take the whole uh, time, which is eight days, or take four days. We have vehicles going back and forth. But think about just sewing for America. How many know that America needs a great awakening? And so we can be a part of it. And what we are is a, is a fire starter. We, with these crusades, we light fires in these communities and allow the wind of God to blow and catch that whole place on fire. Then we go to the next city. And so I need you to really think about it, pray about it. And uh, Harry Torres is a deep prayer about it. Isn't that right? <laughs> He's my staff. I'm kind of teasing him a bit, but, uh, but we might just send you. That might be a good thing for you. You could do your artwork on your laptop as you go. <laughs> I'll be quiet. He's just not saying anything. <laughs> but I want that to be uh, put in your heart and pray about. And if don't let money be the reason you can't go. Amen. Number two, we're having a week or a half week crusade the first week of May, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And Tuesday and Wednesday, we have the, the assistant, what is his name? Praise the Lord. Um, Chris Mickelson. That's his name. Chris Mickelson. He was the assistant to Daniel Kalenda of Christ for All Nations, Reinhard Bonnke's great organization. And this man is a young man. He's not been on his own for five years. I like young people in their 20s that are knocking out of the park. He does four crusades in Pakistan, over 100,000 a, a crusade. 
And he's just got fire in his bones, so he'll be here Tuesday and Wednesday. And we're flying in all the way from Atlanta, a very special guest speaker Monday, Grace Hufton, my daughter, will be speaking. Praise the Lord. But she's got fire. She's a graduate of Rodney Howard Brown's Bible School. If you graduate from that, you've graduated. Amen? So I want you to know that this is a very special Sunday. This Sunday we'll make some announcements about how much money came in for the resurrection seed offering. Would you like to know how much money came in for the resurrection seed offering? <clears throat> Video people, work the best to try to get this. When I go like this, not before, like this, that's when you pop it on the screen. All right? The amount of money that came in for the resurrection seed offering is, whoa, 151000 now that's something to jump about. Whoa! Is that awesome? That's the greatest resurrection seed offering we ever had. So it's a new ground breaking. I want to show you a video, and I kind of got out of line, guys. If you're ready up there in the video booth, I give them challenges. They, they receive communion a second time after the service to cleanse themselves, so whatever they have against the pastor. All right, as you can see, we got a great aerial shot of the whole, of most of the property looking towards the church. Sweet Apple School is right beside us. We got a beautiful field we'll help install. And this property is prime property, over six acres, with a, uh, houses adjoining it, and we will be having a barrier wall constructed. And as soon as we finish paying off the land, we'll begin on the infrastructure, water, sewer, and electrical supply. And we're excited. We're getting very, very close. Yes, we're developing a campus, and the campus is going to be raising up leaders to reach our world for the Lord Jesus Christ. In addition, right where that open spot is, right there in the center, we're going to be putting our tent there, our 60 by 100, and having prolonged meetings, as well as outreaches for our youth and young people. It's going to be exciting. So let's rejoice in our new uh, low figure, which we have arrived at because of the resurrection seed offering, and may the Lord bring you resurrection that will reach our city for God. We're so excited that we're reaching the end of our goal of paying off this property. Where's the property? The property is right over there. Six plus acres right next to our land right here, right across the road. It's going to be exciting. And we're so glad that you're a part of it. And the resurrection seed you sowed is going to bring resurrection to your life. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now listen, that property next door, how many of my, you know, it's, everything is relative, but in, but in Roswell, land's not cheap. 2.7 million for six acres back there. Right now, that was nearly two years ago, it'd be easy over three. So we've taken it down, we've taken it down, we've taken it down, we've taken it down. Would you want to know where we are? Would you want to know? Now, let's get this right, video. People did real good that, this last time. Very good. The remaining balance on the property next door is 788. Hallelujah. 788. I mean, compared to 2.7, that's chunk change. How many believe we can pay that up by the end of the year? Amen. We're going to believe God to pay it down. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. And so during this tithes and offering as we receive them right now, you can give towards creating legacy. You can say, God, this is what I want to continue so towards it. And remember, to be a kingdom builder, which is a very special privilege in our church with a lot of benefits, you need to give, be a tither and give at least $2,500 above your tithe. This last year we had over 100 people doing that. Now, it was a new record. And we're going to keep on moving it up. And so as you sow towards, really that's 50 bucks, I think it's $50 a week. That comes out to $2,500, $50 a week. It sounds kind of out there, but $50 a week, you too can be a kingdom builder. Amen? So stretch your faith. And so we're going to receive this tithes and offering. How many know there's a blessing to the tither and to the giver? I shared this the first service. I shared it Wednesday, but it just stuck with me. A man called me regarding his own personal life. He was a, worked at this church. And he went through this long retinue of financial calamities, one thing after another. In my mind, I'm going, I'm not used to this testimony. Because in our church, 
it's promotions, a new job, a breakthrough, a healing. It, it, I'm, I'm just not used to it. So I invited the man because I realized he hasn't put himself under God's covenant. He's out there without a covenant. Even though he's, quote, saved, I invite him to come to church. And so when I see him, I cannot give the story again because he's now here. But it, uh, but it just showed me that this matter of tithing and giving to God is a divine protection and is a divine promoter for your blessing. It, God does it. God does it. And so it really is a covenant that we make with God when we give. And it sure beats living under the curse. Trust me. It sure beats living under the curse. And so let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you today that we got to pay down that debt to 788 by the grace of God. And every seed that was sown in resurrection offering, let it multiply back into every family's life. Let the blessing continue to flow and to grow and expand. And we're asking, Lord, for those that are faithful to give to the house, that, Lord, that you promise to be no man's debtor, and you will exceedingly abundantly do above all we could ask or think. We believe it. And everybody said amen. amen. And as we believe it, we now act on it. Amen. So let's receive the tithes and offerings right now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It's a great honor to have this wonderful man of God with us today, Dr. John Evanzini. How many have ever heard of Dr. John Evanzini? That's a good, good crowd. For those who don't know who Dr. John Evanzini is, um, to borrow another man's name, Bob Harrison, he really is the doctor of increase. <laughs> and uh, 63 years in full-time ministry, He's pastored very large churches, but he had a divine visitation from God. In fact, when we were with him this last Saturday, just hearing more of the depth of his testimony, he had the Lord showed himself to him in a special time and imparted to him a very special illuminated revelation as well as an anointing that goes with it about finances. And he has been used by God all over the world, in the biggest name ministries, there's not a ministry you could name, whether it's Oral Roberts, Morris Cirillo, Benny Hinn, name any ministry you know of, any renown. He's personally worked with them and helped their ministry. And some of the biggest churches all over the world, they have been, uh, John, uh, Brother John, just his teaching, has actually penetrated whole nations and turned nations, particularly churches that were suffering under poverty, and literally flipped them. He gave me one example of David Summerall, a church in the Philippines, 20 years ago was in deep debt. People were basically struggling all over the church. And he went there twice a year for nearly 20 years. And it literally has changed the entire culture of the church. He said there are many, many multimillionaires in the church now. Many. And the church is now completely out of debt. Everything is paid for, and they have millions in the bank. And they respect Dr. John so much, because this church is in the tens of thousands. I don't know, 35,000 meets on Sunday. They plant churches all over the world. But in honoring, I feel like I've never shared this. I just want to share what, but they are so respectful of what Dr. John Amazzini brought their church and really their city and their nation, that they literally sow into him every single month as a seed of gratitude and sowing into good soil. Amen. 
He's written over 50 books on how to break the financial lack. How many know that everything starts in the spirit? If you can get it in here, you can get it in here. And at 80, he'll be 85 this June. And uh, come on, I'll put your hands together. Uh, I mean, I respect him so, so much that fact he's still going. I mean, he's basically, he, he's set financially, doesn't have to do anything. You know, his closet's full of T-shirts, doesn't need to buy anything or prove anything. It's an unusual position. But he still travels for the sake of the gospel. And you need to understand, don't pass up the opportunity of John Amanzini imparting into you not only knowledge of the word but an anointing. And he'll be here tonight and be speaking on the war on debt, how you can get free of all debt in Jesus' name. But we have a great man, a man who's fought off. A year ago, he was in the ICU. I thought maybe we might lose him. He broke that thing off. He's completely healed and well. Praise the Lord. And listen, his wife, I've never heard of this before. His wife came down with Alzheimer's about three years ago. They went and broke it off. She's completely normal, and she's better now. Come on, come on, come on. And I like to walk with a man of God does not just talk, but he walks out what he says. Amen. But he's been a blessing to so many churches. And Dr. John Evazzini, you have impacted our church. You personally have, I mean, we would not be here where we are today. Apart from 788,000, we're completely debt free. We're, this church is a multi million dollar oper operation. We give millions to the kingdom. And we do it because, Dr. John, you've come, you've helped us. Line upon line, precept upon precept. So we honor you, sir, and we, and we salute you. Dr. John Ambazzini, come on, put your hands together. Let's welcome him all the way from Texas. Hallelujah. Thank Praise you. the Lord. Praise God. Woo. We show love Glory you, to God. I love you, brother. Amen. Glory now, to you God. You can preach to 4 o'clock. To 4 o'clock. <laughs> That's a joke. It's sure good to be, sure good to be back with you. You have a wonderful church. I, I travel so many places, and uh, they're nice churches, but there are few, few of them that are just wonderful. And this church is just wonderful, and I think it's a love you have for each other. I feel it when I'm around you that you care about each other. I want to thank you that you care about me. You ought to see the hotel room. You ought to see the hotel room they have put me in. You know, they just remodeled the whole hotel, and uh, everything's okay. Everybody thinks things going to be just fine. They put me in this beautiful hotel, and uh, I'm telling you, just the pillows are so fluffy. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get my suitcase closed. Well, they all, I found that when you're going to talk to people about their money, you need to get them in a good mood. So I try to have a little joke for you. <clears throat> Tonight is going to be very important to your future and the future of your children and their children. I'll give you a definition of debt. Emptying your future to fill up your present. Mm. And you train up a child in the way that he'll go. Remember that. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. But the next verse says, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower's the servant to the lender. You were set free by the new birth. You have free agents. Totally free. But then you get in debt and you're back under servitude again. The servant of the lender. But God has a plan. He has a plan to get you out of debt. <clears throat> now, let me say he won't get you out of debt in a day. But maybe tonight would be the night for some of you. But there'll come a day that you know that you're going to be debt free. You, you, you follow what I just said to you? I have had a problem with this with my message. And I just quickly spend a little bit more time uh, at this service with you. But when I first came from uh, Abba, Nigeria, where God visited with me in my room, he spoke to me about the hundredfold and how he wanted to bring it into people's lives. 
And as I taught that for about two years, year and a half, two years, all of a sudden everybody was teaching. Everything was hundredfold. Send a thousand dollars and you'll have a hundredfold by Christmas. You, it was just, and so I had to stop that. Then I started teaching on being out of debt, war on debt, and it went along for a few years. And then all of a sudden it was, you're going to be out of debt in 90 days. Everybody will be out of debt. You just send in your thousand dollars. It's really, it's, it, 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 it's frustrating when you have a revelation and it's abused. Uh, I think the Apostle Paul had some of that with his revelation of grace and of the, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There's probably been some, some abusing of that. But anyway, tonight, and let me say what I'll teach you this morning. I, it wouldn't teach in the average church because the average church, I, I, don't, I don't go back to the average church that I go to because they, 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 they had me there for the wrong reason. They had me there to raise money. But this church has never asked me to raise any money, never has uh, balked at any requests that I've made. But I want to, I just want to uh, put into you some truth, things that I can't teach most places because they think, well, it's not that exciting. But there's fundamental things you have to know if you're going to go into what God has for you financially. By the way, what he has for you financially See, he said, uh, <clears throat> he that knew no sin became sin that you might be righteous. We accept that. Well, then he that knew no sickness, he bore our diseases so that we could be well. By his stripes, we're healed. And then, too, in the atonement, and no one wants to deal with it, but it says, he that was rich became poor that you might be rich. Now, see, you won't be rich in a day but if you get into seed time and harvest and understand, which I'm going to deal with in just a few minutes, there'll come a day that you know you're going to be rich. Amen. I'll literally let you say, I mean, Brother John, you're rich? Well, yes, I'm rich. You'd be a fool to be in a room listening to a man talk about money that was poor. <laughs> That's like getting a lost man to teach you about Jesus. Well, one of the things that happens at church is we take offerings. <laughs> It, we, I've, I've said before, and it's kind of funny, you've got to think about it a little bit. I said, you know, salvation is absolutely free. How many know that? Amen. The first day. <laughs> Since that time, I have regularly had an offering plate under my nose. And it's troubling until I learned how to have more than enough. And I've asked people, have, have people ask me, said, well, well, how do you know when you have enough? Well, you have enough when you never have to say no to God again about a financial matter. You, you, you follow? And, and God wouldn't put this stuff in the Bible if he didn't want you to have it. And then some of you say, well, I wish I'd have heard this message 30 years ago. Well, it probably would have been good. But the Bible says he'll restore to you the years that the canker worm has taken. You can start right where you are. One of the things I know for live a long time, uh, by the way, May 21 is when I'm case she was wanting to get me a birthday. Well, he already got me a birthday present. It was sitting in there on the desk. But it may instead of June, I'll be, I'll be 85, 85 years old. <clears throat> if, you count, if you count womb time, I'm almost 86. I did nine months in the womb. But anyway, you see the offering plate, all continuously the offering plates come in front of you. And today I want to talk to you about the biblical way to properly take an offering. The biblical way to properly take an offering. And if you're going to teach something biblical, it's best to teach it out of what the Bible says. And uh, the Bible mentions several offerings, but four in, that I want to talk with you about. Now, it's not one of those exciting stand up, jump and holler and shout kind of a things, but it will increase your understanding. And in a minute, you'll see that that's totally critical to your prosperity. Now, whenever you get into Exodus 35, Exodus 35, they're in the process of raising the money for the tabernacle in the wilderness. And uh, Moses, God comes to Moses in the fourth verse of Exodus 35, and he tells him in the last part of that verse, this is the thing which the Lord commanded. You know, and it's important that whenever we raise money, uh, we raise the money for things that God has asked to have happen. I've seen so many foolish things, foolish things just to raise money. Um, 
I remember one time I, I bought, when, you remember whenever the, uh, oh, I'm going to take too much time if I don't watch it. You guys are pulling on my coat. Um, I, I, I remember whenever the 9-11 uh, uh, took place and then right after that, remember when the sarin, when all of a sudden that uh, poison showed up on letters and the mailmen were all, and I, I took an ad in uh, USA Today, bought a full page ad and I put a picture of the different people and I said, the new heroes, also unsung heroes. And I had a picture of a, of a, of a, of a, a postage worker there with a bag on his shoulder and behind him was a Marine and there was people with, uh, in the medical trade. Beautiful piece of artwork, full page. And then the, uh, I was going to, then I got talking to some guy and they said, look, we can do that thing so much, get so many people together, we can do it in color. And uh, I was talking to it and Pat came and said, Did John, God told you to put the ad in the paper. You put the ad in the paper. You had thousands of responses. It, it's, it's, why do you want to go do more? Did God say to do more? Did God say to do it in color? And so I said, okay, we won't do it. But do you understand what I'm saying? There's so many times a good idea will come along. And then you're pushing a good idea when it's not what God wanted done. But God said that they were to take an offering for this tabernacle. And then it says in the fourth, fifth verse, take you from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart. Whosoever's of a willing heart, and you're going to, if you read this through, and you're going to have to study because we don't have time to go through all 35 verses, but you're going to find that there's willing heart, men whose heart was willing, men whose heart stirred them up. It's just all through this thing. But what you got to understand that word heart, it's talking about the inner man, that new creation man, that person that you became when you were born again, that, 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 that person that lives inside of you. Peter spoke of that person as being the hidden man of the heart. And that man that's in there, the Bible says he's going to have to be willing. Those that have a willing heart, those that, and see, watch this now. Get this, catch this. There's two kind of offerings that can be taken. One of them is fundraising. And there's times that there's fundraising needs to be done. But fundraising has to do with your brain. Fundraising will be an orator that's speaking and logically lays out a plan of what money we have to have. And his, he'll get, you know, oratory can get you emotional. He gets you running and jumping. And that will go into your head. And then many offerings are just taken on that emotional appeal. But the Bible tells us that when this man of the heart is willing, when he's willing, but he didn't even want anyone else to give. You go through it, he didn't ask it anything about the crowd giving, just the willing hearted, those whose internal, that man inside of them, that that man would be willing to do what God wanted to do. So as you, as you look at this, you'll come to find that it's so important that that man of the heart understands some things. Now, I pointed out this uh, in, the, in the earlier service that if two men had a farm, and one over here had been farming 50 years and had the uh, uh, same land over here now, tractor, everything, fertilizer, everything exactly the same. But a young Christian that never had farmed moves in this farm here. In the first year, will this young Christian, this believer, this tither, will his crop be as big or bigger than this lost man over here that's been farming 50 years? No. Because farming has to do with understanding. Do you see? Do you, did you, you understand what I'm saying? This old lost bird, he's been, he's, been, he's been farming for 50 years. He knows. He knows his almanac. He knows when to put the seed in the ground. He knows the different things that have to be done. And this young man over here, he's just learning. So next year, though, if this man has paid attention, this, this Christian, and his understanding came up, his yield will come up. You, you follow what I'm saying? So you got to catch that to receive from God. Now, you can receive in America. Let me say, in America, you don't, it, it, there's people that don't even believe in God that do real good in America because we've got this support system under us. But whenever you look in the scriptures and find now how God deals with how God gives. In uh, Mark, the fourth chapter, Mark, the fourth chapter, now, I'm going to come back to this man of the heart in just a moment. In Mark, the fourth chapter, and uh, the 23rd, 4th, and 5th verse. Now, this is that area where the sower has gone and sows 
and some of it falls on the wayside, some of it falls here, and then some falls in the good ground, and it brings forth 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. But now at the, when you get down about the 23rd verse, he now starts to explain something that's critical to receiving from God. He says, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Now that word hear is word number 191 in your strongest concordance. I, I can't pronounce it. But he sa- it, it says, uh, it is a word that means understand. 191. He that hath an ear to understand, let him understand is what that says. Not he that hath an ear to hear like the appendage on the side of your head. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Let him understand. And he said unto them, 24th verse, take heed what you understand. Again, that word here. Now you're going to get something that's easy to miss. But you're now going to come to an implied subject where he says, and he said unto them, take heed that you, what you understand, what you understand with the same measure of understanding that you meet or do you giving, it'll be measured unto you and unto you uh, and unto you that understand will more be given for the 25th verse for free for he that hath implied again, he that hath understanding to him shall be given and that, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he has. You follow this? If you're going to receive from God, you're going to have to understand God's way of doing things. Over in Psalms 103, it's not going to come on the screen, but the seventh verse, it says, Moses knew the ways of God and Israel knew his acts. You have to be real careful that after all the years of being in church that you just know that Bible, you know everything God did. But there's something, this inner man, if you let this inner man interact with the Holy Ghost and if you will cooperate and not, not struggle with what God tries to put in that man, you will not only know what happened, but you'll know why it happened. You'll begin to know the ways of God. And when you know the ways of God, then, then it's much easier to do the things that please the Lord and that you'll see finances come into your life. Now, there's two parts of you that are capable of understanding. Your brain has the ability to understand. And that kind of understanding is the power of reason. The power of reason. But this man that's inside of you, this new creation man, he operates very different. He doesn't operate in reason. He operates in the rule of peace. Peace. Let me give you a verse now. We're going to look at Colossians 3.15. Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Doesn't sound so strong, does it? Let the peace of God rule in your heart. But when you look at that word rule, when you study it, it means umpire. Let the peace of God be the umpire in your life. If you don't have any peace, you're getting a foul ball. Don't swing at it. But when you have peace, you can go ahead and move in that because God is in the places where there's peace. So all of a sudden, it's a little strange at first because uh, all of a sudden God tells you to do something that seems like, wow, I I ought to do this. Well, I bring what my wife teaches. She says, if you're not willing to do the ridiculous, do not expect the miraculous. If you can't take talking donkeys and swimming axe heads, you're going to have a problem with the word of God. And it doesn't mean that you go after foolishness. But here's just a simple thing I'm trying to teach you. It was just, we started just with one word, didn't we? Willing heart. And that's that inner man. And that word willing is, is, is strong towards generous. You have to have that inner man be a generous man. And then again in the 10th verse, he says, Every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord hath made. And so we, and and listen, again and again, all through these 35 verses, you're going to see things about willing. But then it comes in the 21st verse. And something powerful now said, and they came everyone whose heart stirred him up and everyone whose spirit made him willing. See that word stirred up? Webster, here's what Webster, the definition Webster gives to the saying stirred up. To cause to feel a strong emotion and a desire to do something. Now, I can get you that. I, as an orator, I can bring you to a point of a desire to do something, get excited about something, you know? I mean, charge hell with a water pistol. You know how you can, that kind of stuff. But 
The Bible says, no, this man, this man, that stir up doesn't come from some outside stimulus, but he now has developed his spirit man to where he can stir himself up. Yes. Pastor was talking about the land out there. Well, you know, you sit in a crowd of people and you think, boy, there's enough people here. There's surely they'll be, surely they'll get that paid. Yeah, pastor, we can do it. But now you've got to go into that inner man and say, what, what, are you, what are we supposed to do about this? What is our part? Well, you, you know, there's so many of us we could do, we could do, a, we could do, don't have to do too much. That's one of the biggest mistakes you ever make. Let me tell you what, psychologically, the bigger the crowd is, the less the per capita giving is. Yes. Easter is dollar Sunday. <laughs> All right? I mean, you have to carry dollars out in a wheelbarrow in a big church. Because everybody subconsciously looks around and said, wow, it's going to be a lot of money here. I can kind of let up a little bit. But see, that's reason. That's that reasoner that you got up here. But you get in here with this guy. You get with this guy because in the 36th chapter, the next chapter, you're going to find out that this willing crowd, and he didn't ask anyone else to give, just the willing, where that inner man, the heart was willing, they had to stop the giving. There was so much giving that was more than what was needed for the project. Do you catch what I'm saying? And I listen to your pastor as, as he talks to me and the things that he wants. That, that, he'll stop me in the middle of something. No, I got to get that in my people. I got to get that in my people. See, I think you'll come to the day. I see it coming that there'll be a day that there'll just be such, these decisions will be made in here. There won't, there won't have to be a lot of motivation about it. There'll have to be, well, okay, we're raising that land across the street. And by the way, stop giving. It's paid for. Everything's done. And you say, is that possible? Listen, it, it can't miss because if you believe in seed time and harvest, that land over there is an answer to your land getting paid. Yeah. You, you, get, you get that? Uh, see, because, what, listen, here, and I, I don't have time to go to it, but you go, to, you go in the book of Revelations between the 20th and the 21st chapter. I believe it's right there. Abraham prays for Abimelech and his house. Okay. 75, uh, 25 years ago, he heard he was going to have a kid, no kid yet. And he prays for Abimelech's servants that the wombs would be open, that they'd have children. And when you get to the last verse of one chapter, the first verse of the next chapter says, and, and Sarah conceived. What is it? It's Ephesians 6, 8. Whatever good thing you cause to happen for anybody else, God will cause that same thing to happen for you. I mean, say, here, we're going to pay the land off. No, you know what's going to happen? We're going to pay my house off. That's what we're doing. We're in here getting my house paid for. You know, and, and you say, well, can you really get your house paid off? You can get your house paid off. Honey, you can pay other people's houses off. There's no shortage of money. There's more money than there is anything else. I'm serious. I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, you, you get around to Asia, they're, they're toting $100 bills around in suitcases over there. I mean, they have a briefcase full of $100 bills. I mean, there's lots of money. Don't think there's a shortage of money. Here's a problem. Let me tell you why, why it looks like a shortage. Because the wrong people have the money. Until the children of God get the money in their hands, there's going to look like a shortage. There's going to be shortage. But you let, us, you let this man here start talking across the continents and across the nations and across the cities. Let this man start talking. That inner man start making the decision about the finances. And there'll be more money than you know what to do with. There's no shortage of money. There's people that, there's people that have there's people that have 150 billion, billion dollars. 150 billion dollars. Not 150 million dollars, 150 billion dollars. I mean, there's more money than there is anything else. There's more money than there is leaves on the trees. There is, I swear to God, if all the money in this town fell on this building, if all the money in this town fell on this building, there'd be three days digging us out from under it. They've just built a new press in, in, in Fort Worth a few years ago. They're now printing money in Fort Worth. I thought, well, was there, no, they had enough, enough printing power in Washington and in the other, but it took too long in a truck to get it down there. So they're just printing it down in Fort Worth now. See, are you getting me? Some of you look at me like a cow looking at a new gate. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. You can stir yourself, you can get yourself stirred up from the inside. It doesn't have to be done for you. Now, after this has taken place, we now come to the point, 36th chapter, and the fourth verse. And all the wise men, now this word wise here is talking about technicians, 
artisans, skilled workers, and all the wise men that wrought with all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which he made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to, to make. And Moses gave commandment that they caused it to, to proclaim throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work of the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. The stuff they had was sufficient and all the work to make and too much. Now, here's the fingerprint of God. I better get back here and see what it is. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. God is the God of more than enough. More than enough. Let me ask you this. Has anyone in here ever had a car payment? Just, let's take a car. You had a car payment you couldn't make. And it's written tight. looked like you could chance of maybe losing a car. And you just prayed to God and seriously said, God, help me with this payment. And he gave you the payment. Has that happened to anybody? Why didn't you ask him to pay the whole car off? <laughs> you see, this guy up here, he reasons. This guy in here thinks there's more than enough. He just wants it. To, he just wants the steering wheel of your life. Just turn the thing over to him, and you watch for a little while what starts happening. Promotion comes. Things get paid off. Problems that you have with your kids get solved. All that. Get this man at the helm. Get this man at the helm. Because this guy up here, he's there. There's too many people that are smarter than you. They'll operate you any way they want to. But if you work on that peace thing, they can't get in there and do that. That's God, and God will move you right into superabundance. And he, uh, okay, we, we, I'm, uh, I'm going to seat on this. Okay. Amen. Okay, the next offering, we have a second offering here. And I'm going to give you three or four offerings out of the Bible. And we're going to teach, and that you're going to see that they just run absolutely parallel as to what makes a great offering. Now, we're in uh, 1 Chronicles 29. Now, King David is taking this offering. It's the second offering for the temple. The, grand, the, the, the great temple that he built, that his son uh, built. Uh, now, it doesn't seem like it at first. It's a little confusing. But make yourself a note that in 1 Chronicles 22, 14, he had already given uh, 100,000 talents of silver and gold and brass and iron without measure, uh, timber and stone. He had given this gargantuan offering already, but they, ru they run out of money. They needed a second offering. So the second offering is what you're picking up here, but it's a little shaded if you don't have the have that whole piece of the of, of the book in your mind. So it says, uh, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, uh, we're in First uh, Chronicles 29:1. Solomon, my son, whom alone God has ch has chosen, is yet young and tender. He's kind of saying he's not quite as experienced as we thought he was. The work is great. It's a it's a it's a big project. Uh, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord. Now I have prepared. Now it looks to me like he's getting ready to do. It's, he's talking about what he has done. So I have already is what he's saying, prepared with all my might for the house of God, gold things and made of metal. He goes all through what he says. And he says, I've done all this. And look at the last of that second verse. I've done it all in abundance. Moreover, because I set my affection to the house of God in third verse, I have my own proper goods, gold, silver, which... I have already given to the house of God over and above. Now he says, I'm going over and above. I'm going to give all the gave before, but now I'm going over and above that. And he says, all that I have prepared for the holy house, even 3,000 talents of gold. This is the second offering of Arphra and 7,000 talents of refined silver to uh, overlay the walls of the house with all the gold of, for things of gold and silver for the things of silver for all manner of works to be made by the hand of the artifacts. And who then, now he's turning to the crowd. He says, here's what I'm going to do. And it's for a great cause. Now, what are you going to do? Who then is willing to consecrate, not just give, but get, but dedicate himself to this offering. Consecrate, uh, uh, hands, uh, what, what am I reading? Com uh, his service this day unto the Lord. Then, now here comes the, the energy of this offering is in David. He's motivating. He's the one moving it. 
But all of a sudden, that energy leaves him and jumps into the crowd. And once the energy of an offering jumps into the crowd, it's a success. It'll be more than enough. The whole job will be done and there'll be some over at the end. So what we need to do is we need to get and train ourselves that we don't have to be motivated with oratory, but that we have this inner man that's listening to God. What do you want me to do, Lord? And then, oh, this much? Well, Lord, no, get the peace. Get a place where you have peace. And, you, you know, it might be, well, you know, if we do that, we're not going to be able to do this. Just if you get peace, do it, because God's got some other way planned to do this other over here. You see, but if this man, if this man can take that, that offering away from the guy on the pot platform and can get in there and let God get in there and settle what he's going to do. Man, I tell, and, and see, don't do the least you can do, but do the thing you have peace with. Yeah, I, I've taken offerings before, before. I said, look, if you get a high number and a low number, every time I've heard offering takers say, it's the high number. No, it's the number you have peace with. It might not be the high number. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying to you? But anyway, now this comes, it's now their turn. Then the chiefs of the fathers, the princes of the tribes of Israel, the captains of thousands and hundreds with the rulers of the, king, uh, rulers of the king's work offered willingly. All of a sudden, they break forth. And then the ninth verse for time, we move there. Then the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly because with perfect hearts, same word again, that inner man perfected, now working in harmony with God, exactly in step with what God wants him to do. Now then, what's going to end? What's the end result of this? The end result is there was more than enough to finish the temple. But then <clears throat> David tells us what really works in this guy here. And listen, some of you here are going to reject what I'm going to say, but some of you are going to set your direction into greatness, not just in who you are, but in what you have. If you just catch what is just now happening. Isn't it wonderful that David could have that kind of control in his spirit and that those men around him had picked that up. But here's the secret to the whole thing. It's in the 14th verse. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after the sort? For all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. It's when you become a steward. These people that have this control in their heart, these people that are guided by the Holy Ghost in their giving, these are stewards. These are not people that are handling their own money and helping God out. These are people that God has given finances into their hands and that he now is able to call on them in any way that he needs to to do the things that need to be done. And now watch me a minute. Let me say something to you. When you get more than enough, I mean when you get to some real big money, and I'm in it now this time of my life, I was telling the pastor, I've got enough money to burn up a wet mule. I've got money. <laughs> you know, I give to all kinds of Christian things. We feed the 1,000 kids in Manila breakfast every morning and 250 down in Managua every morning breakfast. But you know, beyond that, I give to the tunnels to towers. You know, these guys I help police, people, soldiers that get killed and their, their wives get a house. I give to all kinds of secular things too because I am part of the secular society. But there was a time I couldn't do that because I could barely have enough to do the things that needed to be done for the kingdom. See, but when you, when you get to where you understand that you, you're a steward, God, this is not my house. This is not my car. This is not my money. This is your money. But now, watch this. If you're a steward, you even get more careful with money. You don't slop money around because it's not yours. It's God's, and you're waiting for this move in here. And as he moves in here, whatever he says, and you move on it, because you know this, that he'll resupply it. Okay, got another minute? You remember there was one steward got five, and one steward got two, and one steward got one. You know why the one got five? <laughs> I tell you exactly why. He did exactly what God said to do, with the, what the master of the stewardship said to do with his money. Now, if you're my steward... And I send you out to uh, pay the last payment, pick up a, pick, uh, the deposit is done now, to pay the final payment and bring back a, a, a bulldozer that I'm buying. 
And so anyway, you come back that night and you've got a, you've got something else, an egg hatcher, this big egg hatcher. I said, what's this? He said, well, I thought we needed that more than a bulldozer. Now, the next morning, ready to get your money, everybody going out. How much are you going to get? None, because you didn't do what I said to do with the money. That's all a steward has to do to go from zero, one, zero to one to two to five. Just do exactly what God says to do with the money, and you will have more than you know what to do with. Are you, are you learning anything? Well, this was so important, David just repeated it again in the 16th verse, just repeated himself. He says, oh, Lord, our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee a house for thine name cometh of thine hand and is all thy own. You learning? Well, let's have another offering from the Bible. And there's lots of offerings I can tell you about whenever this much money came in and the time that they were throwing the money out of the balcony, money was just coming down. I can, I can tell you all those stories, but here is where this is what will change what's in you the word, it's built to go in and build a new person inside of you. We're now going to learn about the uh, offering that the Macedonians made in 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, the first few verses. And I'm going to read it from the Living Bible. No one has it as clear. I don't think the Living Bible is so stingy with their stuff, you can't even get a picture of the text. They may come on the screen, I don't know. Now I want to tell you what God in his grace has done for the church in Macedonia. Though they've been going through much trouble and hard times, they've mixed their wonderful joy with their deep poverty, and the result has been an overflow of giving to others. They started out giving out of the bottom of the barrel, and they were so happy in doing it, they were just hilarious givers. And the first thing you know, they now were giving out of the overflow out of the top of the barrel. It was overflowing into giving to others. I mean, the, God will take and increase you as you increase your, your, your input into the kingdom with finances. I remember, and I tell one story, I tell one story. I, Paul Crouch was building the uh, translation center in Fort Worth, in Dallas, between Dallas and Fort Worth. And I was sitting there with him at the dedication, and the ditch was dug for the foundation, and uh, the steel was in it, and I'm construction, I've been a construction, construction family all my life. And so I'm sitting there with Paul, Paul next to me, and I said, uh, when are you pouring? He said, we're pouring in the morning. And then I said, well, how much will it cost? <laughs> now, I'd been saving for a new Lincoln. I mean, I had it all picked out, and I had 26, 21, 20, it's either 21 or $26,000 uh, um, together. And it was just, it was just going to be that old car of mine and that one is it. The deal was ready to be made. And as soon as I said it, I knew I he shouldn't have said that. No, I, the, the old man said that. But the new man leaped out and said, he said $21,000 or twenty-two. dollars I said, Sister Patton, I'll put that in there. Now call Rob Thompson up and ask him if this isn't true. For 10 years, every two years, he put a brand new What's that big uh, Mercedes? He put a brand new Mercedes, the big one, the long. Every two years for 10 years, he put one in my driveway free for me to drive. Wow. Yeah. Call Rob. Call Rob and ask Rob if it's not true. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money. That, 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 even in the beginning of that, those cars were into 102, 103,000. The last ones was about $126,000. Every two years, put it in my driveway. Gave me the keys. All, all I had to do is put the insurance on it. Everything else was taken care of. Oh, you understand what happened here? That man in here took and sacrificed that lesser blessing because he wanted me to get me this bigger blessing. And I've driven the best, man. I mean, I've driven the best of automobiles right now, driving the best cars you can buy. I'm driving them. And it all that goes back to a foundation that I gave up a, a Lincoln that's sitting now in a wrecking yard somewhere, ain't worth $3, and I'm still driving brand new cars off of that thing. You follow? But I mean, well, he favors you, Brother John. No, I was a renegade when I got saved. I was one of those people that probably shouldn't have got saved. But I snuck in. Now watch. Where do we see the energy? The fourth verse says they begged us to take the money so they could share in the joy of helping the Christians. 
they begged us. They asked Paul with all, Paul, please take the money. Well, you guys are so poor. I can't, T, take the money. Please take the money. The energy was out of Paul. Paul's, no more energy from Paul going into this thing. The energy was in those uh, Macedonians and they gave until they finally had finances rolling out the top instead of reaching in the bottom of the barrel. Don't you tired of reaching in the bottom of the barrel? Get, get God control of the barrel. Tell him this is your barrel. This is your stuff. Tell me what to do. And it'll change everything. You say, you're just raising money. And I'm not raising money. I'm running people off with that. I have people that never listen to me again when I say that kind of thing. They don't want anything to do with me anymore. Are you learning anything? Yes. There you have it again. When that energy gets off of the, pu pu uh, the, the pulpit and gets in the pew, God moves. Well, one more offering. Take one more. We're going to talk about the offering that Jesus Christ made for your soul to save your soul. You know, Calvary was an altar. Calvary was an altar where he was sacrificed. He became a sacrifice. And it's in Matthew 26 and we're in the 36th verse. Then Jesus went with them to, uh, to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and depressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with, with grief to the point of death. Stay here to keep watch with me. My father, uh, in the, the 39th verse, he went on a little farther and bowed down his face to the ground praying, my father, if it be possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Church, what do you do with this verse, 2 Corinthians 9, 7? What do you do with this? Let each one give as it purposed in his heart, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. I believe this, that if nothing would have changed, the sacrifice on Calvary would not have been sufficient. Because the heart was right with God. He wanted it done. But the donor, the donor was reluctant. The donor was reluctant. Jesus didn't want to do it. But he did it. He did it and he did it the right way. Here's what happened. You don't get the answer until you get in Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the same and is set down at the right hand of God, the throne, uh, 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 right hand of the throne of God. What did Jesus do? He got his eyes off of the price of the offering and he lifted his eyes and saw you, the prize, and he got joyful. You will never be able to be a steward of God and a financer of the great end time harvest unless you can get your eyes off of the gift and get your eyes on the prize, the 30-fold, the 60-fold, the 100-fold that's coming to you for putting your finances into the kingdom of God. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? Well, we'll have more tonight. Bless you. Praise the Lord. We're not going to receive an offering. Praise God. He said, let's not receive an offering. I said, okay. You got more years on ministry than I do. But I understand his wisdom. Because a lot of times you speak on an offering, people say, ah, oh, he's just doing that for the offering. That was doing it for you. Amen. We were dis discussing how this visitation from the Lord, how the Lord spoke to him. He said, if people would only listen to me and be willing to do what I asked them to do, Because if they don't, 
then I cannot do what I want to do. Here's that, that amazing. So we become the blocker of our own blessing. Hear this. And you have to be taught it to get past this thing because this thing, and him and I were talking. Any truth that brings breakthrough in your life, the demons of hell want to confuse it, yeah. want to twist it, yeah. want to distort it, want to get it out of balance, have it misused, so people will run from it. And as much as he's loved, he's suffered a lot of persecution. But when you push past, I would call it the interference, and just settle into your spirit, mm. it's what God wants to get to you. Yes, yes. It's such a different shift. Yes. And everything, I don't know if you heard what he said, but you need to get the CD or get online. You can get online now, but go over and over. Because what will happen is it will get in your spirit that I'm a steward. <clears throat> then all of a sudden everything shifts. <sighs> and the monies you receive, any windfall that you have, it's almost, it's a, it's a reflex. God, what do you want me to do with this? And it's really for your blessing. And in these last days, let me know we're living in the last days. These are the last days. I believe more than ever we need to be people of the Spirit. And God wants to do supernatural things financially for you. Beyond the natural. Because your mind's on the kingdom. Your mind's on Him. Your mind's on what you can do to impact the world for Jesus Christ. And I promise you, as He's shared over and over again, the anointing of God. He's been in places where the anointing has hit and giving so much so that he's had to stop the giving. Hours. People are giving for hours. Truth. It's piled high. And it will not stop. Finally, he says, stop. We cannot. We have to stop it. But what? How did that happen? Well, they got a revelation. And the more they sat there, the revelation kept growing. Yeah. It kept growing. It's a supernatural thing when you take one offering in a foreign country, one offering for a foreign country, and receive cash, 27 million, one offering. Truth, truth. And with that cash, they built a 14,000 seat church, paid cash, top flight. This is a place in, 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 in the Indonesia, art. state of the art, everything the newest, the cutting edge. And it's exploded. And so, tonight, he's going to be sharing. Now, be really serious about what your options are. Let's see, I could, let's see, watch a sunset. Cook a Brockworth sausage and look at, I could play with my grandkids. I could watch something on television. Like, very little to watch, really. Or... Now, he's 85. I hope he stays to 105. But it's not so much, especially with him, what you get taught is what you catch. You catch his spirit. And I don't know of a bigger giver than this man. He gives the ministries. He's 50,000. He's just, just, it's just, and he lives with these preachers. He's dead free. He drives the best. He lives the best. But he says, it's not about what I have. It's what I give. Yes, sir. That's where it comes but People from. can get a hold of that. So don't miss the day holy, and the hour holy, of visitation. Holy. And I believe this with this house. As I heard that, that testimony, which kind of grieved me about the man's brokenness. And the curse was on him. The testimony is going to be reversed in this house. It's going to be the blessings of God. They're going to come upon his people. Supernatural businesses, supernatural promotions, supernatural bonuses. In Jesus name. You know part of the reason I believe God healed his wife and healed his, his, his physical body? Because God needs him. <laughs> He's got so much seed in the ground. He said, I can't stop the sowing, man. He's a steward of what I've given him. And I need him here a little while longer on the planet. 
Everybody say tonight. He's holy. Tonight he's going to have the war on debt. And he's not a foo-foo guy. He's written a whole book. My wife and I have had that book. We read that book. The war on debt. Step by step. Not this foo-foo, one prayer, and you're instantly out of debt. He's a businessman. It doesn't happen overnight. But the principles, you employ them in your life. You catch them. You're out of debt. And debt is the number one reason people don't give. Because we bow our knees to the God of Visa, American Express, whatever else we got on credit. But to be debt free. Let's just look to the Lord a minute. Father, we come before you and we thank you for this great truth. Lord, we just feel like our hearts have been split open with the revelation of your word and the truth has dropped in like a giant seed it's gone deeper than we've ever seen before Lord we want to be part of the end time harvest we want to be stewards of what you've given us we want to see the divine increase you prepared for us we want to be that people that we are debt free and then when you tell us to give, that we've got it to give. That it's the joy of God to watch us give out what we've been given. But Father, I want to lift up to anyone that's here today. That maybe a, you came as a guest, as a friend, brought you. And you're hearing all this, but in your heart of hearts before you leave, you know you don't have peace with God. You know you don't have peace with God. You need to make it right with God. He's your creator. Believe it or not, God created you. He created you for himself. But the Bible says our sins separate us from him. But we need to use the house of God. The house of God is where you come and make it right with him. And you can have peace with God if you'll surrender your life to him. Just say yes to God. Turn your back on the things of the world, on the things of sin. You might be fighting something in your life that's kind of plaguing you. You know it's wrong. You need to turn from it. But today, God's going to give you that grace to do that as long as you lift your heart up to Him now. And you can stay where you are. This is between you and God. But I'm going to make a prayer. I'm going to pray for you. But if you're here today, you say, I want that peace from God. I don't have it. Pastor, would you pray for me? I want that before I leave. If that's you and God's talking to you, just slip your hand up. I want to see you. Say, that's me. Pray for me. I see that hand. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. Anybody else would say, yes, I want that. I want peace with God. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. I see that. Another one. Thank you. Now, here's what I'm going to do. If you raise your hand, I just want to pray for you. I want to do exactly what I said. But I want you to just stand at where you're sitting. Just quickly stand up. Everywhere. Just stand up. Just stand up. Everywhere in this place. Just stand up. Thank you. Let's look to God. Father, I pray for each one standing. As we pray together, may you seal the deal. May their hearts be completely transformed. Everybody say this out loud. Say, oh God, I need you. I need your help. I come with an open heart. I turn my back on this world. I turn my back on sin. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He went to a cruel cross for me. He carried my sins for me. He paid this penalty of my sins for me. And say today, I receive the gift of forgiveness and the gift of eternal life. Say these words. Say, come in, Jesus. Say, come in, Jesus. Come into my life, into my heart. Change me. Let me never be the same. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the things of God. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven. Jesus lives in me. Shout hallelujah. Say glory. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Now listen, if you raise your hand, I wrote this little book. It's called What Now? It's a little book. Inside every book is $100. That's 
That's to get you, get your own Bible. You know, I might just do that. That's a joke, but I give $100. I want to do that next time. You know, Brother John, I've had $100 I give away to anyone who comes here for several Sundays. I give $100. You could build a church that way. Every time you come to church, it's $100. But no, we don't do that. It has to come by faith. We don't pay you to come to church. I might have something in it. For this front crowd here, i got something for you. Amen? Every, everybody, let me tell you what I'm going to do. It's one of my favorite books I like to give people. Today only. It's a special. It's free. You raise your hand. I want to give you this book. Oh, she's going to help me. My man. I want the book. I think it's the key book for everyone's life. How to follow God's plan for your life. By Brother Kenneth E. Hagan. How to follow God's plan for your life. That's one of the most important books you can ever read. But I'm going to give it free for those who come up here. Amen? Now I want my ushers, not my ushers, my, my deacons. If you're a deacon, what do deacons do? They deek. I need my deacon deacons to come up here. And we're going to close in prayer. And if you need prayer, if you've got something in your physical body you want prayer over, you want prayer for finances, come let the deacons pray for you. And I'm about this close to release. We used to do prayer in the middle of the service. You remember that? But we've been open since May 1st. And maybe in May we may just, one year is long enough. I think everyone's, amen. I think we've been decontaminated long enough, space long enough. And you hear all this stuff. Stanford just came out with a new research on masks. Did you, did you, did you, did you read that? How that mass, well, I don't want to, I get them all, I won't get that. I, I, I won't go there. <sighs> what medical science finds out. If we just quit with the political pontificators. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Anyway, uh, let's all stand up. And if I have my deeks could come down and we're going to pray a, a blessing on you don't forget everybody say tonight war on debt hallelujah so let's just pray father i pray a blessing on everyone here today even as they go to the food trucks and get many of them free food i pray god your anointing on each one for this truth to come down in their heart and never be and never be removed i pray for tonight it'll be a supernatural night the people will catch that anointing and the revelation for debt cancellation. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen. amen. Now, if you need a free meal, you're here. I have the tickets. If you take anyone out to be with guests, anybody else, I'll give you free tickets. So if anybody needs a free meal, come see me. But God bless you. Linger through the crowd. Go get something to eat. Amen. And stay a while. If you got prayed, come, come on down right now in Jesus' name.